Good evening, and welcome to Q&A, answering your questions tonight. The Federal Minister for Agriculture, Tony Burke. Mental health expert and Australian of the Year, Patrick McGorry. Rabbi Jackie Ninio of uh, Sydney's Progressive Emanuel Synagogue. The author of The God Delusion and the Greatest Show on Earth, ev evolutionary biologist and outspoken atheist, Richard Dawkins. Family First Senator, Stephen Fielding. And the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Julie Bishop. Please welcome our panel. And uh, we're also sending our best wishes to Sister Veronica Brady, who was going to be part of tonight's panel but had to withdraw at the last minute due to ill health. Remember, Q&A is live from 9.35 Eastern Time. Join the Twitter conversation with your comments. If you have a question, send it by SMS to 1975522 or go to our website, abc.net.au slash Q&A. Let's go straight to our very first question tonight. It comes from Arthur Lith. The question for Richard Dawkins, can one be a believer in God as well as a believer in the theory of evolution? Richard, we'll start with you, obviously. First I want to say, why am I the only one who's outspoken? <laughs> you want to be. <laughs> So obviously, books. obviously, you can be a believer in God and in evolution because the Archbishop of Canterbury is, the Pope is, at least the previous Pope was, and the present Pope kind of is almost there. Um, <laughs> and uh, so is any bishop, so is any Archbishop, so is any Cardinal, so is any priest worthy of the name. So that is, is absolutely clear as an empirical fact. It is easy to be both. Uh, I find it slightly hard. I have a certain niggling sympathy for the creationists because I think, in a way, the writing is on the wall for the religious view that says it's fully compatible with evolution. I think there's a kind of incompatibility which the creationists see clearly, uh, but the archbishops and the bishops, um, nevertheless, they, uh, they've seen the evidence. Anybody who's seen the evidence knows that evolution is a fact, and so you can't get away from it. But I think the writing's on the wall. Evidently, 40% of Americans disagree with you, and they can't reconcile their faith with the theory of evolution. The figure varies between 40 45% and has done for about the last 30 years. It's an astonishing figure, and it's, that appears to be true. Gallup polls seem to suggest that that is true. It's even worse than that, because they actually believe that the world is less than 10,000 years old. And because since the true age of the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, that's a non-trivial error. I've previously compared it... <laughs> I've previously compared it to believing that the width of North America is eight yards. <laughs> Steve Fielding, can one be a believer in God as well as a believer in the theory of evolution? Look, uh, I not an expert on these issues whatsoever and I think people in Australia have uh, different uh, beliefs and uh, their faith may drive them one way or the other. I actually believe in creationism. I think uh, the Prime Minister does as well. So, look, I suppose at the end of the day, each person will come to their own conclusion on the issue, Tony. You believe in creationism. So, of course, I've never heard you state this, but it's, it's a fact, is it? You believe in creationism, not evolution. Is that right? That's, that's correct. But, look, each person will come to their own conclusion. Well, and not, you know. <laughs> Richard, you'd like to respond. <laughs> do, do you believe the, the world is less than 10,000 years old? Look, uh, now, do you believe that? Look, I, I think that there are a lot of questions in this area, and I think people will come to their own conclusion. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to force people into one way or the other. You're not being asked to force. You're not being asked to force. Are you a new Earth creationist or an old Earth creationist? Yes. So, which so is it, Steve? You're a, you're, a, you're a young Earth creationist who believes the world is less than 10,000 years old. You're a... <laughs> A parliamentarian in Australia who believes the world you live in is less than 10,000 years old. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that, by the way. You're saying that I said it was 10,000. Okay. I didn't okay. say that. Okay, no, you didn't, you didn't say that. Do you? Do you believe well, it? No, so it is an open question, though. Uh, Look, I, is, I think, is that what you actually believe? Look, I, I, think, I think that the, the science today will discover more and more, but I think that most Australians come to a view that either believe that it, we evolved or we, we, we came from creation. And I think that, you know, people are, you can believe whatever they like on that issue. I'm not trying to force that issue onto anyone, Tony. So where did human beings come from? Well, you in may your, well ask this guy. He, he's, he, he's got firm views on it from that just perspective. In, in your from there. view, I'm just interested in that before we move on. 
Well, as I said, I, I believe that people, you know, started from being created. But look, there are some other views out there about people evolving from other types of animals. And uh, you... <laughs> As in apes, for example. Well, look, uh, that's that's what that's what others some believe that. Yeah, uh, Jackie, let me uh, let me bring <laughs> you in here because we, we'll come back to that, Steve. Uh, um, your view: Can one believe in uh, evolution and still have reconcile faith in God? Absolutely, and I think I'm in very good company, as it turns out, with uh, many religious leaders who believe that. The science is pretty clear that, uh, you know, we evolved. And, but I think that there are still many unanswered questions. And I think we go to a, a big bang or whatever theory we start with, and there's always questions that we don't have an answer to. And I think for me, I answer those questions with a divine being or a god. Others will answer it in a different way, but I don't think they're uh, incompatible at all. So your god is the person or the, 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 the being which created the Big Bang that started the whole process and then stepped aside. Is that the way it is? In, yeah, in my mind, the God was involved somehow, somewhere. There was something before the Big Bang, and there's, there are questions that we don't understand. There are still things we don't know. And for me, my uh, faith and my belief tell me that that was the role of God, was involved there somewhere. But... Um, you know, I, I don't think that negates the science and I don't think that the story that we have in the Bible in any way um, negates all that we know in science. I think it's human beings struggling to understand and to make sense of our worlds and I think we can learn a lot from the creation story in the Bible, not necessarily about how the world was created but um, good moral teachings and lessons about humanity and about the earth and the worlds and how we should treat each other and, and how we should treat the world. Tony Burke. Go back to the original question, can one be a believer in God as well as a believer in the theory of evolution? Oh, the, the simple answer to that is yes. I, I should add I've spent my whole political career avoiding ever making a comment on religion and you bring me here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> tonight. Welcome, welcome to our panel. <laughs> uh, I, I can't for the life of me see where there's a conflict there. I, I just can't. Julie. Evolution and faith can and do coexist and I think many scientists and um, theologians are able to reconcile their um, belief in evolution and the scientific fact and theory and also a belief in a higher being and you know I, I understand the evolution side of it you know amino acids to proteins to molecules to cells to um, organisms and then to a creature that has the brain power to question its own origins that is is man but uh, as Pope Benedict did say he said it's absurd to suggest that these should be presented as alternatives that is evolution or faith and in fact they can coexist they don't have to exclude each other and who answers the imponderable question, well, where did everything come from originally? I mean, where did the original amino acid come from? So I think there's room for both, and they have coexisted happily in Australia and will continue to do so. OK, well, uh, there's a question down the front. I'm going to come to you in a moment. But first of all, we've got a question that uh, draws in Patrick McGorry, and I'm going to go to Dan Anderson first. There's Dan. Uh, the prof Professor McGorry. Uh, in your experience, do you think that belief in a transcendent being or in the transcendent in general is part of uh, normal, healthy human psychology or is it a symptom of mental illness? <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously a trick question, right? <laughs> um, do your best, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you know, um, I've looked after a, a lot of people uh, over the last 20 or 30 years who have had very s significant psychiatric disorders and, um, you know, it's quite common for religious themes to, to actually manifest within the, within the context of their symptoms. So, you know, religion and uh, mental health do coexist in that way. But, but clearly also spirituality is an, is an important part of positive, positive mental health. So I think um, there's two sides to this coin. And, um, you know, um, I think the question... We could talk about that for hours, really. Let's go back to Richard Dawkins. I mean, you refer to belief in God as the God delusion. Um, I'm wondering whether you think that spirituality may have a positive psychological benefit, as the questioner implies.